my lovely people and welcome back to another episode of <laughs> Ladies Night. Tonight's topic is about seasickness. Seasickness sucks. Now to understand the basics of seasickness, you must know that your body has a simple prehistoric defense mechanism where if you eat something poisonous and your body reacts to it in an abnormal way, your brain tells your body to basically throw it all back up. In this instance, your brain is listening to two messengers, your eyes and your inner ear. Normally the three of them are really good friends, your eyes talk to your ears, they agree about what's going on around you and sends the all clear message to your brain. But when you're in a car or a boat or a moving vessel, your inner ear tells your brain that your body is moving and your eyes tell your brain that you're not moving but the whole world around you is. And so that creates a conflict between your ears and your eyes and that freaks the shit out of your brain and your brain doesn't know which one is right. And so guess what? It tells your body, wait a second, something's not right. You must have been poisoned throw up. Some people rarely get seasick while others just are prone to get sick anytime they go on the water. The good news is there are several ways to help prevent it. So ladies and gentlemen, grab your glass, I have mine, and let's talk about how to deal with seasickness. Then and I usually don't get seasick. However, if you follow our normal step, you know that recently I was sick for the very first time after four years living on the boat. Sometimes I get a little bit squeezy where you know that uncomfortable feeling you get when your body gets warm but you still have goosebumps on your arms and everything around you just feels weird? Well, to me, it's a warning sign. It's my body telling me, hey, Kika, if you keep doing what you're doing, I will make you regret it. So at that point, I obviously stop whatever it is I'm doing, whether it's reading a book or if I'm on the computer or if I'm down below for a certain amount of time. And it doesn't even have to be a rough passage for me to feel that way. But when I do feel squeezy, I get out to the cockpit or on deck immediately and stick my face out into the air like a puppy in a car. The second thing I do, I stare at that horizon like I'm going to find a treasure somewhere there because that horizon tells my eyes that my inner ear was right the entire time and that everything is actually okay. And usually on the long passage, it's usually the first 24 hours that I feel that way and after that my body just gets used to it. That one time that I got seasick though, well that happened for a number of reasons. First of all, I ate a greasy giant hamburger the day before we left. Uh, second of all, I completely ignored my body warning sign and with down below for way longer than I was supposed to, knowing full well that I was already feeling squeezy and it was a bad idea. And then minutes later, I had to run back out and throw up. That being said, I strongly believe that anyone, even the best sailors out there, can eventually get seasick. It could be a combination of things, not enough sleep or being too warm or uh, eating something funny or being on a rough passage. A lot of things can add up and then bam, your body responds to that. And given my lack of experience, since it only happened to me once, I can honestly say that I am no expert in the subject. So I gathered as much information as I can and I also reached out to a few of my fellow lady sailors to share about their experience with dealing with it. My first guest um, is Nikkei from Untied Alliance. Uh, you might know her from White Spot Pirates, but she has a very simple method and it's basically letting your body deal with it naturally. Hey, my name is uh, Nika. I've been living on my sailboat Carl for nearly six years now. And before I had my own boat, I was never seasick, never ever. Uh, but since I own my own boat and when I started trying to single hand him, I noticed that I was getting seasick all of a sudden. Not usually if it's just day trips or like one overnight, but as soon as it's multiple days, I get seasick for the first 24 to 48 hours. And I'm pretty sure it's an anxiety-driven seasickness because it only really happens then and it doesn't happen if I have crew on board. I don't really do anything against it, like I don't take any medicine or I don't take any remedies. The only thing that I do is that I try to prep my boat as good as I can so I don't have to be inside during passages. So I have like food ready and a little bit of snacks and um, I have uh, 
Well, my clothes um, around the corner here, so I don't really have to go inside. And I use the bucket out here in the cockpit instead of the head down below. Stuff like that. And most importantly for me, I try to keep hydrated. So I drink coconut water. And if I don't have that, just different electrolytes like, you know, Gatorade or something. I just try to keep hydrated and functioning, basically, so that I can still run my vessel. And luckily enough, I know that I can still function even though I'm getting seasick. So I just, everything has to go out of the body, but I can still, you know, run around and deal with uh, sails and navigating and stuff like that. So that's really good. Because otherwise I guess it would be a little, a little bit dangerous. It gets better with time. I think the more confidence I gain, the better it gets with the seasickness, but it's still there and I'm still fighting it. And um, it's not very nice, but the good thing is once I fight through those initial 24, 48 hours, then it disappears and, and we can have some happy sailing, which is great. Well, um, I wish all of you that you find a way to deal with your seasickness and that you get to get some happy sailing as well. There is though many different methods to deal with it and if you're somebody who get seasick often, then eventually you start to learn what your body reacts to it, what's good for it, what's not good for it. Uh, and I had a long chat with one of her patrons, Rachel, and she has some interesting tips about the issue because she's been seasick from day one whenever she get in the water. But the awesome thing is that she does not let it stop her from doing what she likes to do. Hello everyone from Curacao. My name is Rachel and today I'm going to tell you about my seasickness journey. Uh, as a little bit of context, I work on super yachts. Uh, I've worked on boats anywhere from 40 foot uh, to uh, 177 foot, and I've sailed about 50,000 nautical miles. So here is how I've dealt with my seasickness. Number one, no caffeine. I don't drink any caffeine the day I'm going to sea. Number two, don't go to sea hungover, should be common sense, but it's not. And um, if you're feeling nauseous already, this is not going to help you one little bit. Number three, don't get too warm, whether you're down below, whether you're wearing too many layers. For me, uh, I discovered that I was, this was one of my triggers when I was halfway up the mast of a tall ship and suddenly realized I had to be sick. So I had to make the wonderful decision of, do I keep it in my mouth, gross, or do I unload on all the people on the deck below? Needless to say, I got down the rig very quickly and went over the side. Being too warm is not a good thing and it can happen all the time. If you're down below, if you're in the Caribbean, the stuffy air of a cabin is not going to help at all. So if you've got fans on your boat, make sure they're on you. If you're cooking, make sure you've got some kind of breeze coming at you because then by being near the stove makes you very warm. If you can't do that, take a lie down, uh, take some deep breaths, stick your head out into the cockpit, get some fresh air and then come back to whatever you were doing. It's okay to take a break and it will make you feel better. Number four. I ha when I have to go down below to go to the heads, I, uh, I'm i normally very warm by the time I've got there because I'm fighting my way out of my foul weather gear and by the time I've sat down I'm not feeling well at all. So what I normally do is I get my phone out and I on my phone I have a video of the sea. So I look as long as it's got a horizon and the waves are kind of rolly. Uh, I have a look at that and somehow it sorts out something in my brain and I can still look at the horizon even when I'm not outside and it helps so it helps me so much. Number five, um, smells. There are a lot of smells that set you off. Diesel is the biggest one. The other one for me is bananas. Not sure why. Six, listen to music that distracts you. Sing, dance, do whatever you can. Don't think about being sick keep busy take photos anything number seven find a medication that works for you so I normally use if I have to use medication I use a um, scopoderm patch they're these little stickers that you put on behind your ear and they make me uh, feel normally relieve most of my symptoms I don't use them anymore because I've got my whole list of things that I do before I go to sea or while I'm at sea that help me 
but for the first time the first couple of years i was at sea i would always use these patches they give you a bit of a dry mouth so you will have to drink lots and lots of water um but these have helped me 99.9 percent .9 of the time there are other tablets like hyacine that you can take um hyacine makes me fall asleep but i've seen it work for lots and lots of people we give out medication when we're on super yachts for guests or children who are seasick um there's studeron dramamine most tablets have different ingredients so it's going to be a trial and error kind of thing to find out what works for you but something will um, if you don't want to take tablets there's lots of other things you can do um uh, they have wristbands they have a little plastic circle that pushes into a pressure point here which apparently relieves nausea we normally give them out to children and that works quite well um besides from that you can eat ginger ginger is supposed to be a really good thing it doesn't help me but it helps so many other people and um yeah you can have it jellied you can have raw ginger if you're feeling brave um or ginger snap biscuits or cookies i suppose if you're in america and um that does really help a lot of people and um, the next kind of thing is just really basic and it's to drink lots and lots of water and then eat only kind of really boring bland dry foods salty foods and that should kind of take the pressure off if there's nothing really rich in your stomach but the main one is if you think you're going to be seasick you probably will be so that's why i have my list of all these things that i do it persuades me that i'm not going to be ill so for everybody, you're going to have this trial and error kind of time where you're going to find out what makes you seasick and what helps and what doesn't. And the only way to do that is by being at sea. So do not ever let seasickness stop you. My, some of my friends thought I was mad when I decided I was going to go sailing because they knew how sick I got. But it doesn't have to stop you. If you want to do something, you can do it. It may feel like the end of the world and you may feel like you're dying when you're seasick sometimes because you can't get away from it, but there is, it, it passes and the love of the sea is something that can't be, can't be stopped by being seasick. I'm still here four and a half years later and I love sailing no matter how ill I get and I don't even get ill anymore. And the other thing to remember is that even some of the best sailors get seasick. The Volvo Ocean Race, there's a video of them all being really ill too. So you're not alone, it's not something to be embarrassed about, and it will get better with time. So find what works for you, go for it, go and do it anyway, and don't let anything get in your way. So that's it from me, so thank you very much Kika, and I hope this helps somebody, okay? Bye! And to add to Rachel's list, there's of course a number of other methods you can approach. But I think the important message, well, the two important things are, one, find out what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Maybe make a list like Rachel or let it naturally run its course like Nikkei. Find out what actions help when you get those little body squeezy warnings. And then the second most important thing I think is do not let obstacles block you from following your dreams. If you want it badly enough, you will find a way to get through it. And I promise things will get easier. The more you know what to do, the better it will become for you. And one step at a time, you will get there. By the way, I will put Rachel's list down below in the description along with uh, a bunch of other tips and tricks that I've learned from other people and hopefully you find them helpful and let me know in the comments below if you have another approach that we haven't mentioned in the video and let me know what works for you and somebody out there I'm sure will find it helpful too. So that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a giant thumbs up because it helps me a lot and I will see you in the next video. Cheers! I'm trying to turn you off. Ah! <laughs> Just manually gonna do it.